Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM19 story, part of the furniture with me, Daniel. It's season 7, episode 2, and today we're going to pick up exactly where we left off in the last episode, with our first ever game at championship level, where we face Reading at playing more. We're also going to look at a few stats and any possible transfer news that happens between now and our second game of the season with Bradford. There might not be a lot, but certainly on deadline day there probably will be. We're not going to cover the transfers that have happened over the summer as we covered them in depth in the last episode, as well as our new tactic for the year. So if you don't want any spoilers or any guessing during the episode, go back and check that one out first if you haven't already. There's a link in the eye above, so go back and catch up and then just pop back over when you done but we're going to kick off our championship season we don't want to leave it any longer we've got a home game against a side expected to finish in the bottom half so it's one of the ones we've really got to try and win this year and obviously it probably isn't the best time for a brand new tactic loads of new transfers in the first 11 and a completely new outlook on the club but that's what we've gone for and we're going to hope it works out but before we start, we just want to go and look at the season preview with all the transfers that have been done. Where do they expect us to finish in the media? We're now predicted 21st. That's a big step, actually. At the start of pre-season, we were in outright 23rd, so we were the second favourites after Bradford. Now we're up expected to actually avoid relegation by the media. We've got one of the key players in the league there. In the top 7 or 8 is that 7th on the list, and he's on loan from our parent club, Liverpool. So let's just get into the game and see what actually happens. I could see Reading were actually right up there. They were up in 8th place for the predictions this season, so hopefully that's not right. They were supposed to be a lower mid-table side. So a full fixture programme on the first day, plenty to look forward to, but of course this dream could become a nightmare very quickly. Reading are slight favourites just because they've played at this level before. We've got Stuart Atwell in charge and let's look at the 11 we've got for today. So for those of you who didn't click to go back and see the last episode, you've got your spoiler in the formation now, as well as some of the transfers that we've brought in in the summer. So if we go through the lineup and the subs bench for today, we've got one bit of good news we've got to talk about. Both Eamon McCabe and Owen Jack now qualify as homegrown players at the club. They joined us at 18 and have now had their three years of training before the end of their 21st year. So that means that we haven't got to put a youngster on the bench who's not good enough and it means we can have a proper sub keeper now. So that is a slight strength for us. We've got six good outfield players on the bench, three of which were actually in our first 11 last year and then plenty of other good talent as well. So we've got Alex Bassingol as always, a player who was here at the start on loan from Pompey, 220 appearances now and is still our first choice keeper going into the championship. The same sort of thing applies for Johnny Byrne, he's been here since the National League I think, yes he came the season we got promoted from the National League, got a 7.0 in that season and then when we won League One last year he did exactly the same again. So brilliant development from him and he's in the back three alongside Reese Williams who we originally signed in the National League, lost to Hearts for big money, and then managed to get back for a fraction of the price. And they're split by James Baldock, the stopper we're going to try today. The one bit of the tactic I'm not sure on. He's a brilliant centre-half on loan from Cardiff. The wing-backs are both familiar. Adam Lewis was a stalwart last year. Nico Williams had been on loan before when we first got promoted to League One. And he's now back at the club hoping to prove his worth. We've got Shibola and Tagzef, two new signings in midfield. Tagzef probably automatically becomes the best player at the club. A fantastic signing and he's going to be an absolutely key part of our plan this year if we look to survive in this division. We've got David Crawford in the number 10 role and up front we've got Owen Jack and Bobby Duncan. I'm not quite sure whether to play Jack as a target man or a pressing forward. I think we're going to go for pressing forward actually. We've got Broder on the bench if we need a target man. As well as him we've got new signings Dozzle who's a loney. He's also on the bench as well and Ian Brunt who finally gets his regular place on the bench now that we've got some homegrown players in the first 11. We've also got Davis McKenna Kay Butcher and Stacey, four players you're all familiar with from last year and in some cases seasons before. But we've got to get into this game and hope we can really do something special. So let's get straight into it. We've got the maximum five lone players in the squad. So neither Polworth or McCoon could be in there, but hopefully that won't impact us negatively today. We've got one player to give us squad number two. Who's that? It's the main man, Tagzef. He's going to get number 19. There's got to be a better one than that. Only number 11, which I guess doesn't fit, so we'll trust the assistant manager on that one. Let's confirm that and get into the game. Fingers crossed we can get a result. 
Here we go then, a 4-2-3-1 for Reading. I'd imagine we're going to be in the minority playing a back three. I did mention in the last episode, I've never been able to make them work in FM. So hopefully this will be breaking new ground. It's probably not the best time to try something untested before, but hopefully it won't have a negative impact. Let's get into the game and see if the lads look like they've got a clue what they're doing. Crawford gets the ball to Shibola. He finds Tagzeth. Out to the left-hand side, it's a terrible ball. Excuse the slight pause there as my throat went again, but now it's Reading with an early corner. Bulldog hoofs it clear as far as Owen Jack. Now, can we counter at pace? That's the whole idea of this tactic. We've got it to the left, the flex off the man, but back to Tagzef. Finds Owen Jack. Gray save to tip it wide. Unless it was the defender who got the touch. I'm not quite sure, but that's exactly what we're looking for on the break. This season's the first time we've not really been favourites or had a side that could be favourites in a league. We're going to be in a relegation battle, so we've dropped our mentality to cautious and we're just trying to hit teams quickly on the break. Win possession back quick quickly attack quickly we don't mind keeping a shape generally but you've got to have some sort of purpose when you win the ball Sterling with a cross on the right for Reading but Valencia heads it straight into the arms of a very great for Alex Bass who makes his first save of the game he plays a 1-2 with Tagzef something we tried in our head coach series that worked getting the deep line playmaker to come and collect the ball off the keeper he's done that there and split the three centre halves and you can see we're now able to play it out from the back here is Tagzef Finds Reese Williams. Down the left for Lewis. And now we've got that six men going forward again. Lewis is charging down the left. Finds Bobby Duncan. First start, first goal. We said he was going to score goals this season. And Bobby Duncan has done just that in less than 10 minutes. Slots it down to the keeper's right. Beats him at his near post. And we lead 1-0 against Reading. Kelly on the right-hand side. Bulldog heads it away as far as Crawford. They've won it back again though. And now Kelly on the right. He goes back to Tamori. Finds Kelly again. They're just keeping that ball on the right hand side looking for an opening to cross Sterling's got the ball now to Tamori again crosses from the byline, burn heads away and it deflects inside again Anderson from the edge, Tagsef gets the block on it and is behind for a corner kick, but we're back with a highlight a minute later, we're at the other end with Adam Lewis taking a corner, it's a poor one but deflects out to Duncan, Lewis again back to Duncan for a second time, charges into the box, forces a very well timed challenge and it's out for another corner which Lewis will take as an outswinger. He's going to deliver it. In towards the back post. Headed away by Adarabi Oyo. It's gone out to Crawford. He finds Lewis again. We've got two in the middle but it's over both of them and Owen Jack's got a battle to keep this in. He does just that though. Finds Shibola. He finds Owen Jack again. Delivers towards Duncan and headed away. A concerted spell of pressure but it doesn't lead to anything except another corner now which Lewis finds Duncan with but he heads just over the bar. Nearly 20 minutes gone. We lead 1-0 and it's been a really promising start to our championship campaign. It's Reese Williams on the left, finds Tagzef with a throw-in. Just inside the opposition half, Crawford with a lovely switch out to Nico Williams. He finds Shibola, Crawford on the edge, shot the flex, but it falls to Nico Williams on the right. He finds back to Crawford. Williams again, we're just trying to find that crossing opportunity, but instead we've gone inside to Shibola. Tagzef wins it back, gets Nico Williams in down the right-hand side. Back to Shibola and Williams again. We just can't find that opening, but we're keeping the ball brilliantly. Tagzef goes back to Reese Williams. It's more of a controlled display. We're not playing like a counter-attacking side. We're actually dominating the possession. Tamori's cross is headed away by Williams. Loader shoots from the edge. Deflects to Anderson and Nico Williams makes a good challenge. It was offside but he wasn't to know that and with half an hour gone we retain our one goal lead. It's Lewis with a free kick 25 yards out. We come back just before half time. We've managed to keep Reading relatively quiet. The free kick goes harmlessly wide, but we've got another one now. Good save by Baxter, the Reading keeper. And it's out to Lewis again on the left. He delivers to the back post. Great whip on that, but he's headed away and now Reading can counter. It seems a bit more like we should be more attacking in this one. The cautious mentality has brought them on to us, but I'm certainly not going to change it while we're playing like this. So at half time, we're going to encourage the lads. They've done really well so far and we'll start the second half. There are a couple of little bit analytical bits we've got to do. We've got a man mark, Enna Valencia. That's a name from the past who's at Reading and close down their right wing back. So the ball's gone to Crawford. The highlight ends with a minute of the second half gone and we still lead 1-0 and are looking completely comfortable. Bulldog with a free kick to Tagzef. He gets it out to the left for Adam Lewis. Tries to cross it early towards Owen Jack. Wins the header but it was harmless. Wasn't going to cause the keeper any trouble and it was straight at him as the highlight ended. 
Crawford heads away a long throw from Reading. Anderson out to Matson on the left for them. They've got it in the middle with Kelly, 25 yards out. The shot's deflected brilliantly by Reese Williams, and it's behind for a corner kick. Kelly's going to deliver it, an out swinger there to the back post, Shibola heads away, out for a throw in and good defending again, we really look solid in this formation, which I hope can continue throughout the season, nearly at the hour mark and we've got to start to think about substitutions in a moment, a few players not quite fit after pre-season injuries or just having a lack of game time, some of the ones that have come in late hadn't played at their parent clubs, so we've got to be mindful of that, but we've got a chance to go two up with Lewis here on the edge, chooses to switch it to Nico Williams, Jack's in the middle, heads it in. Oh, he's offside. I'm not sure he was. It looked very close. It may well have been, but it's another good opportunity. And what a first day of the season it would have been if both strikers have scored. As it is, with 20 minutes to go, they haven't. And with Jack on the yellow card, we're going to take him off for Armando Broja. He'll go into his preferred target man role on attack. David Crawford hasn't had the best game either, but we don't want to risk too many attacking subs at the moment. If it's still like that with 5 or 10 to go, we could take him off and bring on a holding midfielder instead so we'll wait and see how that one goes for now Nico Williams isn't having the best game so possibly Jack Stacey will come on towards the end but for now we'll just make the one sub and leave it at that I'm mindful that I quite often make three subs at the same time which isn't hugely realistic so we'll take it in turns and do it a bit more realistically this year there's going to be a lot more close games particularly on the winning side of things it's going to be that we're 1-0 up or 2-1 up and have got to try and hold on so regular substitutions could be the reasoning for that that. Let's see what happens with 10 minutes to go. We're down to 5 now in fact, so we're going to make that tactical tweak. Crawford's going to come off for a holding midfielder. We'll see who's the best in that role in a moment. Dozzle I think is just accomplished. As is Matt Butcher, he's natural, so he could be the man to go in there. And let's see what Tagzef's like. He's just accomplished. Shibola's accomplished too. So that's made my mind up. Matt Butcher's going to go in there. We're going to go for the old defensive midfielder on defend. That's the old classic. And it allows Bulldog to go forward with Butcher just dropping in and covering. So that's a good sign for us. Lewis's ratings really dropped towards the end of this half. I'm not sure if I want to bring on a left wing back though. So we're going to leave that one for now and we'll make the third and final sub in a moment. Four minutes plus stoppage time to go. Let's just see if we can hang on. One minute plus stoppage time, but it's Reading on the attack. Matson finds Enna Valencia. The author's unmarked at the back post. Bass makes a brilliant save to tip it wide. And that's why he and Johnny Byrne are still going in the championship. Brilliant work from the two of them. Bulldogs won every header from a set piece. The stopper rolls work really well. And now Duncan on the break goes a long way, but eventually is challenged. He relieved the pressure for a moment though, so we're happy enough with him. Shibola gets the ball back in the middle. He finds Adam Lewis. A second goal would really make things more more comfortable here. Broach is at the back post and could have delivered it, but he's hit the ball straight at a keeper. The header was poor, and now it's another red in highlight. I was about to make the sub there, but we'll see out the attack first. Hopefully they won't score from it, but it's starting to look a matter of time the way they're playing. The shots have been even, but Reading have really come forward in the second half. Yorford delivers. Williams heads away brilliantly, but it's back to them on the right-hand side. 90 seconds of stoppage time to go, and we're going to make one more sub. Shibola's absolutely now we're going to take him off for Andre Dozzle and we'll probably drop him in as well. Two deep line playmakers on defend and support and hopefully that will be defensive enough to see out the game. We're also going to drop the likes of Lewis and Nico Williams. They're going to go to normal wing backs on defend. We don't want them as complete wing backs now. We're not worrying about attacking for the last 30 seconds. So we've dropped both of those back. Broder will go to a support duty as well and hopefully we can just cling on some way. The ball's down the right hand side for Kai Kai. They could score before they even get the subs made. Matson's got it on the left. There's three in the middle. Adam Lewis flicks away. Only as far as Yorfa is deflected again to the midfielder. To the back post, Nico Williams clears. Backs to the wall performance here. If we keep a clean sheet, it's a great achievement. And the ball finally drops down for Alex Bass. And hopefully the highlight will end. He rolls it out to the holding midfielder. They play a 1-2. And now Tagzef's got it with Bulldog in the middle. As much as I'm not too confident with the ball back here, the longer it is there, the less damage they can do. Broja brings the ball down brilliantly from the long clearance. Nico Williams on the right inside to Tagzef. He finds Johnny Byrne. Tagzef again. Still waiting for the subs to be made. We might not even get a chance now. He's been waiting patiently on the sideline, although that isn't obviously depicted in this match engine. Shibola's got it in the middle. He goes to Tagzef. We're just keeping the ball and it's one of the most beautiful sights to see. We've hung on for full time. A 1-0 win at home to Reading on the first day. And what a wonderful defensive performance. 
performance. Alex Bass, the keeper, with a rating above a 7. Johnny Byrne gets man in a match. James Bulldock was brilliant defending set pieces. And Bobby Duncan got a goal on his debut. Tags F control possession in the middle. And the new tactic seems to have worked. I hope I'm not judging it too soon. A brilliant performance by the boys. And we are going to tell them just how brilliant they were. Well done to the lads. A very nice victory. And hopefully that will be a springboard for a really decent fight against relegation. Obviously, it's very early to read into things after the first day of the season. The one bit that does stand out for me is the relegation favourites, Bradford. They won away from home against Derby. All right, they got a 90th minute winner after a red card for the home side. But it's still a win, and it looks a very impressive result on paper. MK Dons lost. We'd be very happy to see them go back down. And also a defeat for West Ham, who are obviously one of the bigger reputation sides in the league. I'm not sure if they've just been relegated or if they've been down here a year or two. This is where I just go on a tangent and have a look. They've actually had two years in the championship, but have finished in the playoffs on both occasions. Let's see if that happens this year, but a bad start for them nonetheless. Let's go and look at what was said about the game. We edge out a very narrow game. That's a completely fair statement, but the back three were absolutely monumental. Shabola makes his debut and did a good job. The post-match press conference, we very rarely show you these, so let's go through it while we're here. I hope it'll be enough to get 50 points and stay up. I'll be very happy if we get to 50 either way, to be honest. We rate our chances highly because we've got a good team and a good tactic working. Owen Jack didn't have luck in front of goal today. He contributed well though. I mean, give the lad a break. It's his first game at this level. It was good to see Bobby Duncan score on his debut. Shibola did a good job. The referee's instinct was right. We normally would argue with these, but we don't want to do it when we've won the game. We're not going to waste a touchline ban on that. So a thoroughly enjoyable first day of the season. And I know it possibly wasn't the most entertaining game. The attacking free-flowing football we've seen in previous years. But to win 1-0 and get a gritty performance like that, with our defence dealing brilliantly with an aerial bombardment by the opposition, I always find that really satisfying. It's the one thing the match engine depicts quite well, so I'm absolutely delighted with that performance. We're going to go and have a look at a couple of the detailed stats in the championship. I just want to see how our wage bill compares at this level. We were one of the lowest in League One, but we had a few floating around the same price. Obviously, we have to wait until we've played a game of the season before we can do this. But ironically, look at that from the relegation favourites. Bradford had the highest possession on the first day and we were up in third place that's something that interests me we'll see if that stays the same over the season so net transfer spend first we're 10th because we've only sold one and a half millions worth if Owen Jack goes on deadline day we could be right near the bottom with 10 million that would put us down to 19th or 20th salary per annum that's the important one I'm sure we'll be 24th and we are and we're half a million behind the next club and over a million behind Bradford in 22nd that shows just how big the golf is in terms of reputation now we really need to get a stadium to be able to push forward they rejected our request in the summer they said that they didn't have enough money in the bank so hopefully if we can sell Jack and McCabe on deadline day we'll be able to go back and get it then but if we have to go one more year before we can get the finance for a new stadium, then so be it. As long as we stay in this division, it'll stand us in good stead. I'll happily take 21st this year. I'll go back and look at the last episode for where you guys predicted me to finish. Although I do think we're still going to be down there this year. Anywhere 21st or above, I'll be a very happy man. Let's go and have a look at the schedule for when we might next be back. We've drawn my beloved Luton Town in the Carabao Cup first round. We're going to ignore that, as for once I'm not going to put up a fight in the Cup competitions. I'm one of the few people of my generation who love the FA Cup, love the League Cup and would happily fight for both. Once we get to that position, we're a safe mid-table Premier League club. I know I'm talking a few years down the line. We'll certainly go all out to win the domestic cup competitions. But for this year, the priority is staying in the championship. So we'll rest the full 11. If we have to play youth players, so be it. And we'll just take whatever comes to us in that one. I'm not worried about staying in the competition. I just want to stay in the championship. But there's plenty of big games coming up. And I think one of the biggest this season is probably going to be MK Dons away. So we may well show you that one or potentially the game before which is Swansea at home because that's also the lone window deadline so we could have a couple of ins and outs in that one so I think we'll come back for that one at the end of August Swansea at home we want to see one of the bigger sides we didn't want to come up to the championship and then show a game against MK Dons so Swansea it will be 31st of August and that will be back on 
Sunday at 4.30. But a massive thanks for watching this one as always. If you did enjoy it, please put a thumbs up on the video. I really do appreciate your continued support with the series. It really does mean a lot. Let me know in the comments, is there anything you think we need to do in the next week for deadline day? I think it's on Thursday or Friday this week. It's this Friday, so we've got until 5 o'clock on Friday to get a player or two in. Obviously, changes will be largely dictated on whether Owen Jack goes out, Eamon McCabe, the likes of them, and whether we stick with our tactic after Wednesday's game against Bradford. I've just realised there what a brilliant pre-season we've had. It's not the sort of games I normally manage. I leave the assistant in charge and then just attend one or two of them. So we beat Liverpool Sheffield United and Plymouth as well as a host of lower league clubs so brilliant stuff all round there but let me know where you think we're going to finish this season and let's see how many of you are right at the end of the year is anyone going to be bold enough to predict we get relegated subscribe to the channel for daily FM19 content from my two long term stories this one part of the furniture with Torquay United where we're enjoying life in a new division after our remarkable rise to the championship but I think we might be getting stuck in this one for a few years yet there's also our other series, The Head Coach with Barnsley, where we're a journeyman working under a director of football with no say in transfers or contracts. And then there's weekly content from my FIFA 19 lower league career with Crew Alexandra, which is out tomorrow at 4.30. But a massive thanks for watching and your continued support of the series. And we'll see you next time for another big game on the Lone Window Deadline.